Welcome back to Screen View Mirror. I'm your host, Emma, and you're listening to Screen View Thoughts. On this episode, I'll be talking about framing truth. And I don't think that there's a cinematic example of that as good as Akira Kurosawa's 1950 Rashomon, at least not an example that I've seen thus far. Now, the Rashomon effect actually has its own dictionary definition, and it's related to the film, but uh, it's really about the unreliability of testimonials and the fact that we can not really be sure of the truth when we're given so much contradictory information and various interpretations and descriptions of events which don't really seem to match up. And the story of Rashomon goes that, well, we have four different perspectives of mm, the same events. We have a woman and a samurai walking through the forest and a bandit, perhaps, we don't know, we're not sure, but a bandit attacks them and the way it ends is that the samurai is killed. Did he kill himself? Did the woman kill him? Did the bandit kill him? We don't know, but... That really is the question here, right? What is the true story? But more importantly, if we align the story of Rashomon to the context of its time, you know, you have post-war Japan trying to recover from the war, trying to recover from the tragedy of war. And the question is, what is to be done? But not only, the question is also, how do we write history? How do we have justice if we can't always be sure of what the truth is. How do we trust individuals? And there's even a quote in somewhere in the middle of the film where um, the woodcutter says, well, everyone lies. It's natural to lie. And who cares about the truth if you're entertained? That may have applied to 1950s Japan, but that also applies to our society today, a society in which we have contradicting news and we don't always trust journalism, and we sometimes care about entertainment more than truth. And I think that the story isn't so much about POV, it's not so much about points of view, as it is about the framing of different points of view and the framing of stories and truth. So we have these four perspectives. By the end of the movie, we still don't know who told the truth, but that's not what matters. That's not the moral of the story, which I will get back to towards the end of this podcast episode. But first, I want to explain the three settings of the film, which are matched up to three different points in time. So we start with the present day. Well, present day, I mean, the movie is set in, I think, 11th century Japan, but at the point of, you know, the, the story that is the present day, and it opens at the broken down Rashomon Gate, which in itself symbolizes the destruction of World War II. And we have a woodcutter and a priest who are complaining and and regretting the facts of the world. And even the dialogue opens with, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Which in itself is a symbol of the uncertainty that comes following a war, and during a war, of course, but it's also a foreshadowing of the uncertainty that will come with the four perspectives that we hear, the four testimonials. And the point in time just before the woodcutter and the priest talking at the, at the gate happens outside in a, in a, well, not in a room, but in a courtyard kind of place. And There's a lot of light in that scene, and it's kind of like an open outside courtroom, right? It's the judgment scene where we as the audience hear the testimonials, and we are invited into the film to judge who's saying what and to ask ourselves what the truth is, because the way those testimonials are carried out is we don't actually see the jury. The jury doesn't even speak, but the dialogue end of the jury is assumed by the characters within the frame. And they're even looking directly at the camera, almost as if they're talking to us, the audience, the judges, and asking us to sympathize with their points of view. So the film goes back and forth between that flashback and then the flashback of the flashback, which is 
the story in the forest where the bandit attacks the the samurai or you know whatever we get different interpretations we don't know what the truth is right but so we have those two flashbacks and then we have those three settings the gate the forest and the outdoors sort of judgment scene and they're matched by three different points in time and i think that it's by adding both the flashbacks to the present day at the gate that we realize that this is a story about the framing of POV rather than the POV itself. And as I watched the film, I couldn't help but get more and more skeptical as each new perspective was presented to me. And instead of feeling more pulled into the story, although the film is very participatory and very inviting, I think I was sort of pushing myself away from the story so as to distance my judgment from the subjective and, and it goes without saying, contrasting facts that were presented to me. But by the end of the film, I'd given up on figuring out who killed the samurai because I realized that was not the point. In the closing sequence, the woodcutter and the priest find an abandoned baby at the gate. Now, the film could have ended before that, you didn't have to include the baby in the film. You could have just ended it cynically, saying, well, we can't always be sure about the truth. End of story. But no, Kurosawa chose to add that to the closing sequence. And what's the significance of that? So they find the abandoned baby at the gate. And if we look back at the opening sequence of the film... It starts with a beggar running from the audience's perspective, running from our side toward the gate and getting the woodcutter and the priest to talk about the events. And then we're invited into the story with the testimonials, right? The characters talking directly to the camera. So the story is brought alive to the audience, brought alive by the audience, but then the story is returned to the audience because the woodcutter decides to adopt the abandoned baby. And that's the moral of the story. Despite the problems of the world, despite the horrors and tragedies of history, despite the fact that people lie, there are people who deserve a chance. There are people who are not at fault, who are not to blame about uh, on, the, on the state of affairs of the world and we should give them a chance we should be understanding we should be compassionate and we should try to be better and what does the woodcutter do he walks from the gate toward the camera and he essentially gives the baby to us so kurosawa is saying here Look, guys, we have the chance to start over. We have a future. And despite all the horrible things that have happened, we shouldn't give up. Yes, this was a devastating war. Yes, history is certainly not perfect. But we should have a sort of mutual compassion. We should have a kind of solidarity and fraternity. We should have an understanding that allows us to raise that baby, to realize the future. And hopefully, instead of framing truth, to discover what it really is. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week. This was Screenview Thoughts.